Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's here to break down tonight's NBA slate. What's happening, Tom? We got a good one. Nine games, plenty of options, plenty of value on tonight's slate. Last time out, Joel Embiid was your NBA fantasy player of the night. Tonight, he's your favorite superstar on this monstrous slate. Why are you back in Embiid once again? Yeah, I think for Embiid tonight, it's like a classic, like, don't get cute spot, right? We know Ben Simmons is out. We know that the extra usage is going to Embiid. Right now, we see him sitting with a 36% usage rate. That's a 4% increase compared to his usual. And we have a good matchup tonight. You know, if you want to play into the narrative of him versus Andre Drummond, I actually went back and looked at their head-to-head stats. Embiid is averaging 27 points and 10 rebounds to assist in these games. So that brings us basically, you know, close to a 40 point floor with the extra usage. We're going to see him push towards, you know, 50 fantasy points. And we saw it the other night, like 78 FanDuel points is what he ended with 49 real points. We want him in this spot, a solid 220 over under everything going in his direction tonight. You're right. Don't get cute. Just do the obvious play. Get Embiid back in the lineup without Ben Simmons there for the next several weeks. This is Joel Embiid's team again, and he's going to be the dominant offensive force. Let's see what Embiid can do in this matchup. Another no-brainer play here, Tom, is Bradley Beal, who's gone for 50 with regularity, seemingly. Can you do it again tonight? I certainly hope so. And like, We need to start a free Bradley Beal movement, get him out of Washington, get him onto a real team. And if you look back at the three games this side of the All-Star break, He's taken 28, 27, and 33 field goal attempts, like you said, going for 50 in two games in a row. Now, his season average is 22 field goal attempts you know, per game. I obviously know John Wall this year, and that's a normal spot that we want to be targeting him. Okay, he takes a ton of shots. He has a high ceiling, but they're leaning on him even more. Going up against the Nets tonight, we have a solid you know, match of 235 point over under. Both teams in the top 10 when it comes to pace. I'm going to be riding Beal until he doesn't seemingly put up 40 or 50 real points, pushing towards 60 or so FanDuel points every single night. Yeah, he has been a rock-solid play all year long over on FanDuel, and tonight's going to be no different. I also hope so because he's in my lineup here. Bradley Beal, get him in your lineup as well. For Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers, it's been a bumpy February for them, and and I think they're looking to uh, end the month much better than they started it. Leonard, a solid play tonight. Why is he your third superstar to get in there? Yeah, like you said, bumpy you know month month for them, and you know the question I have is like, is Paul George really healthy? Uh, we've seen his production dip. He got hurt before the All Star break in that game against the Celtics. Missed their first game back. Played only 21 minutes in their most recent game. And I said, oh, was that, you know, was that due to fouls? I went back and looked. He had no fouls in that game. And Paul George just seemingly doesn't have it. And whether it's Paul George in out of the lineup, Pat Beverly in and out, they're adding Marcus Morris, whoever it may be, like Kawhi is still that constant. And when Paul George is off the court, if he's struggling and not going to be playing a whole lot, we see Kawhi up at a 36% usage rate, posting 1.62 FanDuel points per minute. We have uh, the, the Clippers against the Suns tonight. Both teams are sitting at eight and nine when it comes to pace. So really, we just want to lean on Kawhi, take that usage rate, take that consistency on a nightly basis. Absolutely. The consistency that Kawhi Leonard is providing at the power forward spot, which has been tough to fill this season, makes him a no-brainer play on this big slate. Get Kawhi in there if you have the funds to do so. But if you don't have the funds to get Kawhi Leonard in your lineup, there are a bunch of value plays that you can start with, and that begins with Josh Jackson. As the Memphis Grizzlies, they've lost Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr. They've now lost Brandon Clark, their first-round pick, which means Josh Jackson's the next guy up, and he's been really hot when given an opportunity to play. Exactly. Hit with a a few injuries, and, you know, I'm on board with the Grizzlies this season. I'm on board with them moving forward. They have a super fun lineup. Uh, Sitting in the eighth seed right now, it's certainly looking like a bit of a stretch for them losing two key players. We want to be looking at Josh Jackson. He's the minimum salary tonight. He's listed as a small forward, but should be lining up as the power forward against the Rockets. Both teams in the top five when it comes to pace, a 237 point over under. We really should be looking at Josh Jackson as one of the chalkiest plays on tonight's slate. We look at the Rockets this season. They're allowing 47.1 FanDuel points per game to power forwards. That's the fourth most in the league. So Jackson, you know, checking every box tonight, cheap player, high over under game, seeing more minutes, being productive. We want that value with him tonight. Absolutely. Seeing Josh Jackson be able to be productive in this system, playing with John Morant, uh, it's awesome because he's a failed uh, top lottery pick, and now he's getting an opportunity to play, and his price is still down on FanDuel, making Josh Jackson an excellent play here uh, tonight in this slate.
Up next, we move on to a bigger a bigger guy, and that's Jakob Pertl for the San Antonio Spurs. Pertl's a guy that we have used and then stopped using, and now we're using again. How come? Yeah, he's had his moments, and those moments are basically tied to when LaMarcus Aldridge is out like he is tonight. So we want to be going to him at $4,000. You know, overall, it's a middle-of-the-road matchup against Dallas. They're allowing 51.1 FanDuel points per game to centers. The league average is at 51.9, so they're just slightly better than that average. And with Aldridge out, we actually don't see uh, Jakob Pertl's usage rate change too much. We actually see him boost up to 1.22 FanDuel points per minute, which is really solid for a guy who's only $4,000. We should be seeing, you know, plenty of usage going to DeRozan and Utah Murray, throwing some Patty Mills in there, Rudy Gay, whoever it may be. And although the 13% usage rate on Pirtle isn't amazing, we want to be trusting that 1.22 production per minute. So at $4,000, if you're not spending up for Embiid tonight, take some savings with Pirtle. You don't want to spend all the way up for Embiid, and you should. Don't be stupid about it. Pirtle's a fine alternative option uh, for the San Antonio Spurs here. He's at his moments. Let's take advantage of another one tonight. Final player here that we got to bring up tonight here, Tom. It's Nas Reed of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Nas Reed's got an opportunity to play. And the question I know a lot of fantasy owners have had is, are is Nas Reed or James Johnson, which one do you play without Carl Anthony Towns in the lineup? You're going with Nas Reed. How come? Yeah, Nas Reed, uh, I would say an interesting play. 20-plus minutes or 21-plus minutes in four straight games dating back to prior to the All-Star break when Carl Anthony Towns first missed against Charlotte. We look at his production and you're saying, okay, do we go to Nas Reed? Do we go to James Johnson? You know, somewhere around the same price range, playing somewhere in the similar minutes. I just like, you know, Nas Reed's game a little bit better, and that just might be a personal thing for me. And I think he actually matches up a little bit better uh, on tonight's slate if he's going to be out there being a little more athletic with Bam Adebayo, who should be playing for the Miami Heat. And if we look at the current starting lineup for the Timberwolves, obviously they're changing things, getting uh, D'Angelo Russell. He's in and out of the lineup. He actually holds Reed Dud. Reed does, holds the second highest usage rate and the second highest FanDuel points per minute, sitting at a 23% usage rate and 1.28 FanDuel points per minute behind D'Angelo Russell. So we want to be trusting the player that is becoming their secondary scorer without Carl Anthony Towns. All right, it's a preference there from Tom. Nas Reed over James Johnson likes the way he plays, uh, likes what he has given you over the past couple of games here for Minnesota. Nas Reed, a fine, cheaper option here on a FanDuel. So what I was looking at a little while ago, and Nas Reed worth putting in your lineups tonight. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry of Tom. We appreciate the time. Good luck tonight. Same to you. Absolutely. Tomorrow, Jim Sanos will join me as we take a look at the XFL this weekend. I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.